Hi, this is Gail from Life and Splatters, and I'm just going to do a quick video on how I mix my paints. And this is a general, uh, how I mix my paints for swipes, open cups, floating cups, great big schmears, uh, pretty much th this is my go-to consistency for almost everything. So depending on if it's a tube paint, a liquid paint, or a heavy body paint, I'm going to describe what I do. So these are all uh, tube paint consistency. So they're a medium thickness. I've got one part paint to about four parts American Floetrol and a squirt of water. I want there to be a little mound that will sit there for a second or so and then disappear under the surface. So it's a good juicy liquid mixture. Uh, I want it to be thick enough that it's going to hold its shape when I place the paint on the canvas. I don't want things to spread and lose the shape. Now this is a heavy body paint. It's Golden's Payne's Gray. And I was mixing this to do a great big schmear, but I was doing it with Australian Floetrol. So I start by putting about two parts of Floetrol into the cup and one part of the heavy body paint, which is about a, a good tablespoon and a half. And I'm gonna start mixing. Now this one was a little difficult at first the uh, heavy body didn't want to break down and become as liquidy and I had lumps in it and so I stirred it quite <laughs> vigorously and shook the table. But I find if I have a paint that goes lumpy and doesn't come together uh, within the first couple of minutes, set the paint aside and you will find that in about 10 minutes the paint will be lovely, smooth, and lump free. And that's what happened with this Payne's Gray. And it is uh, a little thicker than the other paints. Uh, the other cell activator that I do use is uh, the Amsterdam formula, which is Amsterdam black oxide or titanium white. And to that, I add four parts of American Floetrol and no water. You want your cell activator, I believe, to be just a little bit thicker. And what I added there was a little bit of Golden's Paints Gray fluid, just to add a punch of the Paints Gray color to that mix. So these paints are all very similar consistency. There's no silicone in them and they create beautiful cells. You don't need to use silicone. It's, a, it's an interesting tool and can be used, you know, at times, but you really don't need to use uh, silicone to get cells. Now I'm going to mix the black Amsterdam formula. So I have Amsterdam's oxide black. I put one part, now that this is a, a, a tube paint, so it's the consistency of a toothpaste and four parts of American Floetrol. And I stir it very, very well. Occasionally I'll add a tiny squirt of water, but generally I don't. Now I've let that Payne's Gray sit. It is mixing and blending perfectly. The lumps have dissolved and it is usable. So don't panic uh, if you get, if your paint doesn't seem to want to mix or it's a tad lumpy. In this video, I am custom blending some paints. Now that is the Modern Master Sachet Red and it's already got the flow trawl and a little bit of water mixed into it, but I want a pink color. So I start adding some of my uh, Artist Loft Flow acrylics in white, and until I get 
it to the color that I'd like it to be. Uh, I wanted a, quite a pale pink this time. And so this paint is gonna end up being thicker because I've added the white. So I'm gonna add some, some more Floetrol to it. And I will add a little bit of water. Now this is for a swipe and smear technique. And you want that to be a little thinner than what I've got. And you know, you add a water a little bit at a time, stir, 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 stir. Uh, it is good if you can to leave your paints to sit overnight after you've mixed them because there's bubbles, but you can torch the bubbles out. I find I make my paint up as I go. And if you have leftover paint, you can add to it. You can alter the color. You can add more flow trawl. You can add a, another color to it. To, if you say you've mixed a turquoise and you want to work with something that's more teal, you can add black to that turquoise, add a little bit more flow trawl, a little bit of water till you get it to the consistency of the paint you want for that day and continue on. You should cover your paint at night. I find that the press and seal is a wonderful uh, plastic wrap that will stick to the rim of the cups and it will uh, keep it sealed and the paint will be just as good. And I, I've used paints that I've kept up to a week or so. Um, and as long as the air doesn't get to them, they don't form that film across the surface. Now, these are colors that I'm playing with uh, and I'm trying to adjust the tone or the hue uh, for this particular painting. So that was Nicolet's Ozo Gold on the right and I wanted to lighten it up. So I put in some Artist Loft Flow White and some more Flow Troll and probably gonna need a little titch of water to get it to the right consistency. Yep, there we go. And again, if you add it slowly, you will uh, get it to the right consistency. If you add too much, it's a little harder to thicken paint up, but you can do it by adding more paint from the tube. The other product that is really wonderful is Sargent's Pearlescent Mixing Medium. And if you don't mind making your color a pearl color, it will thicken the paint. Now I'm mixing a white base color and it's a, it's a, actually that is the Meaden acrylic and it's a fairly heavy body. So it's one part paint to three or four parts Floetrol. And I think it's going to probably need just a little bit of water. I find that I like my base coat to be just a bit thinner, but you can see that little mound, it just hesitates and then it goes away. In this segment, I'm mixing mostly two paints. The first is an Amsterdam paint. It's interference, but they call it pearls. And I think this was the interference red. Now it's a fairly thick paint again. So it's going to be one part paint. I start by adding approximately three parts Floetrol. I'm eyeballing it. If I have a half an inch in the bottom of the cup, another three parts to that would be another inch and a half. So I'm eyeballing that approximately, you know, three times the amount of paint that was in the bottom of that cup. Check for consistency, add a little bit of water and let it sit a bit. And I check my paints two and three times to make sure the consistency has not changed. Now our Tezas uh, two paints are also really lovely and creamy and they're a delight to uh, mix. Again, I use three parts Floetrol to one part paint. And I think I do end up just a little bit of water. That little bit can make the difference. If your paint is too thick, it isn't going to move. Now, some people test their consistency by putting a drop of paint on a piece of cardboard and holding it up and seeing how well the paint will move down the paper. And that is a, a good indication. I've done enough paintings that I now know the feeling when I'm mixing that it's, it's just right. This is a beautiful color by Arteza. It's Pearl Golden Hour. Again, one part of the tube paint, three parts of Floetrol. 
you can stretch it to four. Uh, again, just a little bit of water, and most of the time the water has a little bit of Floetrol in it. I think it's one part Floetrol, maybe 10 parts water, not even, you know, just a little bit so that you're not putting in pure water. Now the Sargent, this is my favorite copper, Sargent Acrylics Copper. Guaranteed when I mix this paint, even though it's a bottle paint and it looks uh, a little thinner than the tube paints, it does seem to require more water. So again, I'm doing three parts Floetrol, one part paint, but I know from using this paint over and over again, it's really quite thick. And I always have to add extra water in comparison to the other paints. And the more you do this, the more you get the feel for it. Uh, don't be intimidated by it. Uh, every, every time you do it, you learn something a little more. Uh, I want all of my paints to be the same consistency. Maybe my base coat could be thicker or thinner, depending on the technique that I want to do. Uh, and when you put your base coat on the canvas, you should be able to tilt the canvas around and uh, have it flow over the edges of the canvas. Now this is my Amsterdam Oxide Black, and I'm gonna use that as a cell activator. So that is one part black oxide, four parts American Floetrol. And I rarely add water. I might add just a bit if it feels particularly thick. There is variation in thicknesses of Floetrol as well. Uh, you could have one jug where it's very thick and you could have another jug where it's quite thin and you should always strain your Floetrol into another container because it will inevitably have little globs in it. Now this is Arteza's uh, little bottle of iridescent uh, paint. And it's a little bit more fluid than their tube paints. And uh, again, I'll go three parts of Floetrol to one part paint. And it still did need a little bit of water just to bring it to the same consistency. And you'll see, I will check the paints over and over again and adjust them as needed. I'm adding a little black to this uh, pearl turquoise. I wanted it to be more of a, a rich teal pearl. And look at how beautiful that color is. And if you add a little more paint, chances are you need to add a little more water. Now I've got it perhaps a little too dark, so I'm adding a little more turquoise. But it's fun to play mixing your own colors. Uh, you don't have to rush out and buy a lot of special colors of paint. You can play, you can deepen colors, you can lighten them. And uh, that's all part of uh, learning uh, what colors work well together. You could uh, study color theory and the color wheel and you'll get some very good ideas about what colors you put together to create a particular shade you're looking for. Now this was a situation where I wanted silicone and I put two drops of silicone into a very small amount of that lime green paint. And that's going to give me some crazy good cells. And uh, that is TriArts silicone. You can use treadmill silicone, you can use OGX hair serum. They all will do the same job. Now I'm mixing uh, some really pretty colors for another painting. These are all from the Modern Masters. Uh, except for one, there's the Modern Master's Gold, Modern Master's Burnt Orange, and Sachet Red. And the pink is an Art Minds DIY, which is no longer available. So these are bottle paints. They're going to be thick, not as in the same way that a tube paint is. Uh, they're, they're a little more liquid. As you can see, it pours out, not like toothpaste, but like thick honey, actually. Uh, so I start again, one part paint, three parts Floetrol, a little bit of water if I need it, and in most cases I do. Uh, this was for a swipe technique with some great big schmears in it, so it needed to be quite fluidy.
You may notice that I don't add any other pouring mediums. You certainly can add Liquitex pouring medium or any other pouring medium. You could add some GAC 800 if you wish. I don't as a general rule, but those can help to stabilize your paints and come up with a better result. So you'll see here that I am constantly comparing the paints to each other. I, I will mix two, three, four paints, go back, check the first one again. I'm checking them against each other and you really do develop a feel uh, where you actually feel the resistance of the stick is about right. Um, you'll see I, I add just a bit of water at a time and look at the, the little uh, ribbon of paint and how it lands on the top of the paint. See, this one's a little thick. That uh, mound sort of hesitated quite long and probably was a mound on a mound. And now I think I'm getting closer to what I want, which is, no, a little more water, a mound that will disappear fairly quickly. This is one of the techniques that I do uh, using the paints at the consistency that I've mixed them. Uh, this is going to be a great big schmear. I've already flooded the canvas with uh, white house paint mixed with Floetrol and water. And for the white house paint, I use an acrylic latex indoor white paint in a semi-gloss finish. And I will mix it nearly equal parts Floetrol to paint, and then maybe another 25% of that in water. I want it to move smoothly on the canvas when I, I set it on and rotate and tilt. And the paint should sort of level itself out and make a nice smooth surface to work on. I'm adding the ribbons of color and as you can see, because they're uh, of that thickness, they're staying where I put them. Now I'm putting a bit of the white Amsterdam formula, which is their titanium white, mixed one part paint to four parts American Floetrol. And this is just a dollar store spatula. And I smear it over the colors and there's very delicate and uh, soft lacing and cells that are uh, being created. I like to then do a tilt and stretch the paint out and that helps with the uh, formation of the cells and the pretty patterns. And I really love how this soft pink and gold are working together. So now I get out the palette knife and I start to play and just draw some lines down and uh, sort of smears out and adding a few details to this. 
Now this painting will take a couple of other turns before I'm done. Uh, it is really very pretty and soft, but I've decided that I think I need a little more drama. These colors really are working beautifully together, but for some reason I wanted a little more drama. So I reach for the Black Amsterdam formula and I put it on the back of the spatula and I'm going to smear it over these colors. And you'll see the painting come to life. Yes, it's lovely and soft as it is right now, but when I add the black, there's a more definition, there's more movement in the piece. I'm often working on a painting in layers. So this is a layer, I'm gonna keep adding to it. Uh, see the introduction of the black. Now I'm using a palette knife, it's a little harder to control than uh, some of the larger spatulas that I have. But you can see where I'm going with this. And uh, it, it does create a whole other effect having the, uh, the contrast of the black. So I'm, I'm pleased with how this painting looks. I'll do just a few more smears and uh, create a bit of interest. Uh, you can see the cells in the lacing caused by the great big smears. You can see how the white brought up some cells as well as the black. But I really do like the addition of the black for drama and contrast. It helps your eye move around the painting a little better. I do like the pastel look but I do enjoy a little bit of drama or high contrast. And I think that's important when you're planning a painting to make sure that all your colors are not of the same uh, intensity. So you could have light colors, medium toned, and you need to have dark contrast or you're going to lack uh, the little details that make a painting really interesting. Now, 
you don't always need to use black, uh, but you will have a much softer composition. Uh, just keep that in mind when you're planning and uh, see what appeals to you. This is all, again, part of finding your own voice and your own distinctive style and how to make uh, a painting your own. Uh, every, every time you paint, it's an opportunity to learn more about how it works, what you like, what you don't like. Uh, if you don't like a part of it, scrape a part of it off, add some more paint and do it again. But make it your own painting. That's really uh, what art is about. So thank you very much for sticking around and uh, I hope that I gave you some ideas. Uh, I hope I've answered any questions regarding paint thicknesses uh, for these techniques. Uh, a ring pour is going to be a little bit thicker and uh, a Dutch pour is going to be thinner for certain. Uh, but this is the consistency that I use for the majority of the techniques that I use. So let's keep playing with pigments and making beautiful things. Thanks so much, Nerissa, for the opportunity to uh, create these videos for you. And thank you all for having uh, attended the seminar. It was a wonderful opportunity. Take care. Thanks. Bye.